So I wanna break down how people could start doing SMS and hopefully help them get their first wholesale deal or even scale their wholesale company. Your first full year of texting, like how much did you make? We made 275,000 on like $12,000. Of ad spend? Damn, that's really good yeah. marketing. You no, know, this year we've uh, done a couple months of uh, six figure months. You said you made two fifty, you spent twelve thousand dollars on marketing. Like, how did you do that? Well, Angel Hernandez, how's it going, baby? Everything good, man. Yeah, excited to have you on the podcast. Uh, for all our first time listeners, this is the Wealthy Investor Podcast, where we interview the top real estate investors in the country. So if you haven't subscribed, thank you for viewing and like this video. Um, today, I wanted you on the podcast because I know you are killing it wholesaling here in Las Vegas. Um, I know you make big margins with little marketing spend. So I just want to go over that. I want to go over that in detail. Is that well, great? Yeah, absolutely. For Beautiful. Sure. So for people who don't know who you are, can you give us your quick intro? Yeah. Um, Angel grew up in New York City. Um, moved to Vegas about six, seven years ago. Uh, and I got into wholesaling about, uh, four years ago during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, that's really, that was my introduction uh, to wholesaling. Like a lot of people, um, got let go from the position that I was in and, uh, wholesaling found me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I guess like, give us, give us some of your highlights. Like how many wholesales have you done? How much money have you made? Um, I've probably done close to like 60 deals. Mm -hmm. Um, we average, I think I've averaged like, uh, 31,000, um, in, in, in profits, mm -hmm. uh, per deal. Mm -hmm. Um, don't do a lot of deals, but the margins are, are, are up there. Yeah. And, uh, I do SMS marketing, it's mm -hmm. my bread and butter. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. uh, it. And, uh, this year we've, uh, done, um, a couple, a couple months of, uh, six, six figure months. Oh uh, yeah. So tr trying to get consistent, uh, in the six figure months. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, touch the, the seven figure range in the, in the years to come. Got it. And then like you, you're doing seven, let's say six figures a month. How do I reset it? You're doing six figures a month in profit, but how much are you spending on marketing? So not a lot, um, just in, so we do SMS marketing and, uh, we're probably spending like 2,500 in Dang. marketing. Yeah. So the, <laughs> the, the return is, is amazing for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I want to break down how people could start doing SMS and hopefully help them get their first wholesale deal or even scale their, their wholesale company. Cause doing six figures a month is pretty much like you scaled it. But like, I guess before we get into those details, like what got you into real estate? Well, um, during the pandemic, uh, like I said, uh, I was um, a general manager at a fitness studio and um, I got let go like a lot of people did. You got fired? I didn't get fired. I got let go with the understanding that we were going to come back. You got fired. Um, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> um, but They're like, don't worry, you're going to come back. It's going to yeah. be all good. No, but in, in all actuality, I was actually um, probably their best general manager within their, their network. They own like 12 uh, fitness studios, those, okay. that, that ownership group. And yeah, I got let go with the understanding that, hey, you know, we had to do this, but it's going to blow over and, you know, we're going to absolutely have you back. And that's exactly what happened. Like two months later, um, you know, everything blew over and they were like, hey, we're going to get started again. And I was like, well, actually, yeah, um, I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah, I've been um, pretty much studying real estate, wholesaling. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, my, the, 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 the people who I was working for, they were actually pretty understanding and they actually encouraged me to do so. Got it. Happy for me. That was here in Vegas. That was here in Vegas. Yeah. And how much were you making working at the gym? Probably like 60, 65,000 with like all the commissions and bonuses that I was making. Got it. Okay. So you got laid off temporarily in yeah. 2020. Yeah. And then did you already know that you wanted to get into wholesaling? No, man, it was by the grace of God, to be honest, like it just popped up on my YouTube. I uh, have no idea how it popped up in my algorithm. Yeah. Um, it was just there and, you know, bored during the pandemic. I clicked on it and just went down a rabbit hole. Who was it? Um, I believe uh, it was Max Maxwell and Jerry Norton. Got it. I've had Jerry Norton on the podcast. So after yeah. this podcast, go listen to that one. But um, I haven't had Max Maxwell on. Yeah. But um, all right. So you started um, seeing those videos. Mm -hmm. And and then what happened? 
I started seeing those videos and um, I started just kind of kind of like making a plan. Um, I wasn't really uh, up with the concept of like take action now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I uh, f- first thing I did was make a plan on my whiteboard and I had a plan of a million things to do. RVM, SMS, cold call. Like I thought I had it all figured out. I was going to do everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, it took me about two months to, to take action. And mm. uh, after those two months, um, I started driving for dollars. Yeah. With my wife. And that's how everything started. We started driving for dollars during the pandemic. Uh, notating properties that were, you know, um, that looked distressed. And then we skip traced them, started calling those people, and that's how the journey started. Got it. On your first, so your first wholesale deal was a driving for dollars lead. Yeah, the first few actually. Yeah, they were all because I was the only list that I was um, acquiring was the list that I was driving for dollars. Yeah, and then like, so let's go into that a little bit more because people think driving for dollars like they think you drive around and get a couple houses like. Mm-hmm. How much driving did you do? How many people did you call? Uh, I mean, it didn't take us a long time to get good at it. Probably after like a couple of weeks, we were like driving for two hours and we were probably tagging like 300, 400 properties. I mean, Vegas, the houses are on top of each other and some neighborhoods you go in there and it's all the properties pretty much. Got it. Um, so we would tag like 300, 400 properties in the span of like two, three hours of just driving. Got it. But even that's a lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you said that's when you got good at it. What about when you weren't good at it? How long were you driving? Uh, a very long time. I mean, me and my wife would be driving for like five hours. We'd be arguing. Slow down. <laughs> go faster. <laughs> go back. Like, no way. Yeah, I swear to everything. We had some of our best arguments driving for dollars. <laughs> some of yeah. your best arguments? Of I'm going to use that. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, it was therapeutic. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> and then you guys got your first wholesale deal like that? Yeah. And then how much did you guys make off your first wholesale first deal? First wholesale deal, uh, we made $10,000. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And then your next couple all from driving for dollars. And then, wait, that was in 2020? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 2020. And then when did you start texting? We started texting uh, uh, pretty much. Um, I, so I tried cold calling for like a, for like a month. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't working out. Like. I don't think people really understand um, how hard cold calling is. Just yeah. sitting there on a dialer and um, calling people. And that wasn't working. And uh, after like a, a month, month and a half, I started texting because it fit my personality better. Just, mm-hmm. you know, reaching out to somebody and somebody raising their hand and then me actually being um, engaged in that conversation with that person who's actually interested in selling. Um, yeah. And at that point, uh, I, I, I noticed the results right away. Um, I started oh. talking to more uh, interested people as opposed to getting a lot of no's and you yeah. know, disgruntled people on the phones. Yeah. Uh, so I leaned towards the, the SMS pretty, pretty quickly. Got it. And then like, so your first full year of texting was 2021? Uh, or 2022? No, full year of texting was 2022. Got it. And like your first full year of texting, like how much did you make? We made 275,000 on like $12,000 of (laughs) marketing. Damn, that's really good marketing. I think you're, you're a genius marketer and you don't even know it maybe, or you probably do know it. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm flattered by that. Uh, I, th- <laughs> I think I statistically you are. I, mean, I, I think um, there's definitely you know room to to get better. There's there, there's always is, and you know that's why I'm always kind of looking for you know education and trying to get better and uh, fixing the the kinks within my my business. Yeah, and I think um, I want to get into the tactics of like the text messaging, but I think you you also like didn't start off like from like a rich family and no, I don't know if someone, you know, held your hand and got you into entrepreneurship. So like, where did you like start off originally before you entrepreneurship? Yeah. Entrepreneurship and working at the gym, uh, in the hood, <laughs> which I mean, hood are you from? You're from New York or yeah, I'm from New York city. Yeah. yeah. I, grew, uh, I was born in the Bronx and grew up in Washington Heights, Harlem. And yeah, I mean, I'm not from the best, uh, best of places. Um, didn't have the best, uh, people around me growing up or, um, yeah, didn't grow up around the, the best environment per se. Yeah. Like what was it like growing up there? I mean, it was normal to me, you know, just yeah. a lot of, a lot of hustling, a lot of street stuff, a lot of, um, 
wasting of time. Yeah. A lot of non-productive work. Um, yeah, just a lot of putting your life on the line, I guess, and, yeah. you know, just wasting a lot of time. I think something crazy happened to you, right, when you were younger? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been shot twice. I've been stabbed. Um, yeah. Gone twice at the same time, or these are two separate occasions? No, I got stabbed once when I was younger, about, yeah. like, 15, 16, I think. Yeah. And then I got shot twice in, in the, during a separate uh, occasion. Damn. Yeah. That's great. How you, you said you were like 15? No, I got I got stabbed when I was 15. I got shot when I was like 22, 23. I was just kind of yeah stabbing, hustling, yeah making money. And then like, how did you start to realize to get out of that? Um, my wife, honestly, I mean, she's a uh, she's the one who really um, has helped me with my relationship with God, with Christ, mm. you know. And uh, I mean. My, my whole life, like, I, I knew uh, right from wrong, you know. I was just kind of doing some things because it was easier to do, you know, and it was what I what I knew best. Uh, but really, um, meeting my wife is what kind of got me out of everything. Um, and, you know, she's just a kind-hearted person who allowed me to see the world in a different, different manner. And at one point, I thought that where I was from, that's how it was everywhere. And that, that's not the case, you know, life, yeah. life gets better. And that's usually what I try to tell people who, who grew up in the same environment that, that I grew up in. It's like, there's, there's more to life, you know, you just have to be able to, to, to look for different things as yeah. opposed to just assuming that this is the only thing that is, it's life. You know what I mean? How much, how old were you when you met your wife? Uh, I was 21. 21. Yeah. And how old are you right now? I'm 30. 30. Okay. So you met your wife. Um, you're living a crazy life. And mm -hmm. this was in New York. And then when did you move here? So I moved here uh, like six, seven years ago. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you were with her for a couple years. Yeah, yeah. And then you just needed change. Is that why you moved? Well, I got shot. And then um, that's really what what did it. Um, just the the whole situation of me almost uh, losing my life mm -hmm. and having nothing to show for it at that point. Mm. It's like, you know what? I, I almost lost my life for, for nothing. And um, I actually got shot in my hand and Damn. I was like, man, like I could have lost my hand. Like I would have been, I would have been sick if I would have lost my hand. Oh like, damn. I can see your scar. Yeah. I got a big scar and that, that wouldn't have been a, a good thing for me. Just, yeah. You know, just not having a, a hand, but Ultimately, that's what allowed me to change my life, um, just realizing that it was either going to end in, in two ways. And it's cliche, but it is death or, yeah, or jail. jail. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that I kind of like came from that same background where like some of my best friends growing up are like in prison and, mm -hmm. you know, been in some wild environments. I don't like to talk about it because I feel like it's so far mm -hmm. away now. That's like when I was like 15 to maybe 18 so now it's like more than 10 years ago so i kind of right. just like can't relate to that anymore right. but yeah is that kind of how you feel about it um i mean i i grew i grew up in it um and i feel like it's part of who i am because yeah. it, it taught me so much but i've learned so much past it at this point in my life that um i know what's better i know what i you know what's what I shouldn't do. Yeah. And I, I, I look back at it and I see, you know, even young, younger kids in, in the same situation that I was in. And um, I just, you know, pray that, you know, they're able to, to make it out and see past um, all the struggles and um, everything that they're going through. Uh, yeah. You know, being in, in, in that type of environment. Yeah. Okay. So let's transition back to um, real estate. So, 2021, you said you made 250. You spent twelve thousand dollars on marketing. Like, how did you do that? Well, um, at that point, uh, SMS marketing was cheaper than it is now. Okay. It, it was definitely a little bit cheap, a little bit cheaper than it is now, um, and it was just kind of implementing some systems and processes of uh, really uh, targeting the the right the right uh, zip codes, the right people, you know, distressed homeowners, and just uh, keeping a pool of, of people who were interested in selling, who we uh, continuously followed up on. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we were there at the right time, right place, right time. Got it. So, like, in 2021, do you know how many deals you did? Uh, we did, uh, that year, we did, like, 11 deals. 11 deals. So, yeah. you're, you were averaging, like, one a month. Yeah. Got yeah. it. And then 2022, walk me through 2022, 2023, and then now 2024. So, 2022, um, well, the... The year after that first year is when um, I signed up for uh, uh, Future, Future Flipper. Flipper. Yeah. Uh, at that time, Future Flipper, and um, I was interested in in, in di- diversifying my skills and mm-hmm. you know learning how to flip. Mm-hmm. And at that point, the market was going down. Yeah. Right. So, um, just like a lot of people out there, uh, I lost money with with uh, with the flip. Yeah. I actually did three flips. I won big. I won very big in one. Um, Broke even with the second one and like lost money with that third flip and, mm-hmm. um, you know I know a lot of people who kind of just disappeared. Yeah. From uh from real estate. A ton of people. Yeah, due due to the fact that you know things went wrong, but I was able to fall back on my skills to find a deal. Mm-hmm. That's what saved my business. Ultimately, my my skills to be able to find deals saved my business because I lost money like everybody else did. How much money did you lose on that one deal? Um, I've lied to myself so much during that time. I, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've lied to myself so much, but I think it was like 40, 50 grand. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, I always say like, you're not a real investor until you lose money on a deal. Mm-hmm. Like if you haven't lost money on a deal, you, you haven't done a lot of deals. Right. Cause that's, that's like saying, have you ever spent money on marketing and it not worked? Like right. at some point, yeah, you're going to, yeah. So, um, so 2022, you started flipping what happened in 2023 so in 2023 um i think we did like uh 350 okay um had my daughter okay uh so that took a lot of my time away from the business um and i mean i don't regret it it was a it was a great time in my life yeah uh it it it, you know my wife was pregnant and moving buying a house and yeah whatnot and uh, it was it was a little bit different. It was some, I was going through it for the first time in my life. She's my my first child. Yeah. Uh, but we were still able to keep the business uh, in a good position. Yeah. We did about three fifty, and that put us in a great position to to keep getting education. Yeah. Uh, keep searching for for things to do and and just kind of uh, sharpening that that iron. Yeah. What about what what are you on track to do in twenty twenty four? So 2024, we're on track to do 600, 700,000. Dang. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. Um, I'm blessed uh, to, to, be, to even be able to say that. Yeah. Um, right now, just trying to focus on um, getting consistent with the $100,000 months. We've had two so far this, this year. Just trying to kind of uh, keep so, going with that. So you've made like, so you've made $300,000 in the last six months then. Yeah, we're almost at three hundred. Yeah, yeah, we have okay. Some in escrow that have to close, but yeah. That's yeah, got it. Okay, so okay, let's break down. Let's go into texting because mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, "Well, texting doesn't work anymore." It works, I, but people don't think it works. It works, and um, I won't lie. Like I like you know the the regulations with the with the carriers they change so often that people just go into frenzy about texting and. I do the same. Like every time something happens, you know, it crosses my mind. Like, hey, should I diversify? Yeah. Should I drop texting? Uh, but ultimately, I've been in real estate for almost four years, and I've heard it so many times. Uh, texting is gonna die. Texting is gonna die, and every time there's always a way. Yeah. At this point, the way that I feel is like if they make it so that you have to go to Mars to be able to text, I'm going to Mars. Yeah. Like send a VA up there. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to Mars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But okay. So, so I guess break down the numbers, like how many texts are you sending a day or like what KPIs are you looking at? Yeah. So right now we're sending uh, 150,000 messages per month. Uh, we, <laughs> yeah. We try to send about 4,500 to 5,000 per day. Yeah. Um, and uh, delivery rate, we try to get it at uh, around like 80, 90%. Okay. I think that's a good delivery rate. Yeah. Um, and then response rate depends on what type of message you you're using because you could go the vague route or you could go the direct route. Uh, if you go if you go vague, then you probably want a response rate of like fifteen to twenty two percent. 
if okay. you go the you know uh, direct of like hey you know you're yeah. interested in selling this property, probably like eight to to twelve percent. Eight to twelve percent response, rate. response yeah. rate. Okay, and then for vague language, you're looking for a twenty percent. Yeah, that, that's really good. How do you send that much that much text message? Because I feel like um, it seems like it would be a lot of work. Uh, I mean, it's, it's automated for the most part. I mean, we do have a VA who handles um, the the marketing, but uh, I mean, there's some great software softwares out there. Uh, mm-hmm. We use uh, uh, Smarter Contact right now, mm-hmm. and uh, it's pretty much just uploading list and you know, you you t- you uh, set the uh, <coughs> the preference and the timer, and it just sends out the messages automatically. Mm, okay, got it. And then, I guess, walk me through the process of you're sending out all these text messages. Mm-hmm. Are you the one responding to the twenty percent? Because even if if you send out four forty five hundred text messages a day, you will get like about a thousand responses a day. Then right. So how are you doing that? So the VA responds, uh, responds to all the messages. We have like quick templates yeah. that allows them to to respond. But for the most part, you'd be surprised. There's not a lot of responding. Like th- mm. th- there just isn't. Like we're just sending messages for people to raise their hands, and if they do, we push them to the lead manager, and the lead manager calls them. Oh. For the most part, there's not a lot of back and forth, a lot of responding. It's more so sifting through the messages more than responding to the messages. And what's like the biggest profit you've made on one deal doing this type of marketing 80,000 80,000 on one deal yeah that was earlier this year Ooh, ooh wow yeah but um okay so 4,500 text messages you're getting about a thousand responses and then how many leads are you typically getting a day probably in the range of like 18 to 25 that's a lot of leads yeah that's a lot of leads um, yeah and uh, what, what that's a mess, you know, a lot of the leads, a lot of the people who raise their hands are like fake people or wrong numbers, people who are joking around, but that's uh, the lead manager's job to sift through those, through those people. Do you know how many like net leads, like real leads you're getting? Yeah, it's probably, it's probably like 50% or 50%. 40% of the, okay. the leads that come in. So somewhere between five and 10? Uh, no, more like eight, eight, eight yeah. 40% and, um, Net leads is usually just somebody who's the owner who says they want to sell. Yeah. You know, it's the lead manager's job to kind of dig deeper into their actual qualification. Got it. So you're getting about eight leads a day. Mm-hmm. It's like five or seven days a week. No, five. Five days yeah, a week. No, okay. no weekends. No right weekends. Now. Got it. Okay. And then how many leads does it typically take you to get a deal? So um, a couple of years <clears throat> ago, it was around 80. Okay. Right now, it's like... 140. That's net leads or that's total leads? No, that's uh, that's total leads. Got it. Okay. No, that's net leads. Sorry. That's net leads. Net leads. Yeah, net that's leads. not just res- like yeah, fake. Yeah, net Got leads. it. So 140. Mm-hmm. Um, and then how do you manage all these leads? Because that's a lot of leads. The lead manager, we have a, a great process for him. Um, it's pretty much uh, just dialing people as they come in, mm-hmm. figuring out... Uh, if they're truly interested in selling first and foremost, mm-hmm. um, and then figuring out if they're a fit for us. Mm. Uh, those are the two things that we look for. Are they interested in selling? Are they a fit for us? If they are, if they are a fit for us, then we break down their situation and see if there's a problem to, to help them with. Got it. Okay. So, um, so it's taking him. Uh, are you dialing too or just lead manager? No, just the lead managers dialing. I'm doing acquisitions. Got and it. We, we really focus on like distressed properties. We don't get a lot of the, you know, stucco homes here in Vegas. You know, built after two hundred. You know, two thousand. We don't really get a lot of those. We because our marketing is strictly the distress, uh, distress zip codes, and that's really who we target, and that's where all our deals are at. Okay, and then, so, let's walk through the process. You're getting eight leads a day he's dialing through how many of those leads typically make it to you um so he pushes about one he gives me like one to two appointments every single day of leads that deserve my time pretty much Mm -hmm. yeah okay one to two appointments a day yeah phone appointments a day got it okay so oh okay so if he's getting eight like one to two are actual like good leads yeah and then how many of those 
types of calls does it take for you to get a contract? Do you know? Uh, I would have to look at the KPIs. Um, can't really say off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I would probably have to look at the KPIs. Got that it. One. Yeah, I'd be interested to see like how many pass offs it takes for you to get like a contract. And then are you locking your deals up over the phone or you're actually going out there and going on appointments? Um, no, I, I go out there and go on appointments. Got um, it. I'm like super advocate for, you know, going to, to the property and locking up the property in person, especially here in Vegas. We have higher price points. Yeah. The people are more knowledgeable. This yeah. is not the Midwest where you get a property for $50,000. Yeah. You know, yeah, like uh, I, I build good rapport over the phone. Um, I set myself as somebody who's serious, who <coughs> wants to go out there and meet them in person and shake their hand. And yeah, go out there in person. Got it. What about, um, do you know how many appointments it takes you to get a contract or like what your closing percentage is on your appointments? Yeah, so my in-person appointments, my closing percentage is really high. I actually want to bring it down because it means, you know, if it's really high, it, it means I'm not taking enough, enough appointments. Enough appointments you know? Yeah. So it doesn't, you know, me having a great closing rate doesn't, you know, mean anything. It just means that I'm not going on enough, enough appointments. appointments. Uh, but like if I go on two appointments, I'm, I'm getting one, you know, so it's at least 50%, 50%. and it should be like... 20, 25. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So I need to go on more appointments. Got it. So are you going on an appointment every day pretty much? No, not every day. Mm. Um, I, I found it to be tough here in Vegas to go on appointments every single day, especially with just doing SMS marketing. Um, that is one of our goals for, you know, for us to hire an acquisitions person and for them to have an appointment to go uh, to every single day. But that's the main reason why I haven't hired an acquisitions person yet is because I don't have enough food for them Got to it. be able to go out there and, and, and be busy every single day. But that's th one of the goals. Okay. And then let's talk about like, what are you saying on these text messages that you're sending out? Um, so like I, I said earlier, uh, there's two types of messages that you can say. You can either go vague or you can go direct. The, the, the direct is pretty simple. It's just saying, hey, you know, are you interested in, and selling your property on 123 Main Street, mm -hmm. that type of message. And then vague is anything that would get the person on the other end of the phone to simply respond with, with a who's this or what are you talking about. So a, a good example of a vague message is, hey, how's it going? Yeah. You know, and when they say, who's this? We say, hey, this is such and such. We're looking to buy properties. Are you interested in selling your property on 123 Main Street? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, so that's a lot of work then on the VA. You only have one VA? Yeah, we only have one VA. Got He's it. a monster, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we've He's really good? Pretty, really good, yeah. How long did it take to train that VA? Um, Probably, uh, I'd say like three, four months. Oh, okay. And then just kind of maintenance after that, just making sure that they, they're on top of their game. But um, I'd say it took a while to train them just to kind of, you uh, know, d do things correctly. Yeah. You know? How much do you pay your VA? Uh, the VA is uh, $5 an hour with, uh, with a bonus for every deal. It's only like $100, $150 for every, for every deal. That's very interesting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what about uh, how much do you pay your like lead manager? My lead manager, he's yeah. on a uh, salary uh -huh. of $1,000 per month and then 5% uh -huh. commission. 5% commission. Got it. And then... I guess, like, what, what does he typically say on the phone? Like, what's his spiel? Well, it's pretty simple. Like I said, his, you know, he's pretty much reaching out. Hey, you know, you were texting my, uh, you responded to my assistant. It seemed like you were interested in selling your property. Is that still the case? Yes. Okay, great. Well, you know, we're looking to buy some properties in Vegas. I uh, just wanted to see if we'd be a right fit for each other. Did you have yeah. some time? And then he just further qualifies them from that point on. Yeah. And then... And then if they say, yeah, I want to sell, it's the right person. Is there like main points that he has to get on his call? Well, mainly the, mainly the, the motivation, the motivation and the timeline. If, mm -hmm. if we have that, then we can pretty much figure something out with that, with that person. Got it. And then, and then do you call the lead before you go on the appointment or he just books the appointment? No, I call the lead before going up, going on the appointment. Yeah, okay. I, I, I I prefer to have a, uh, some report built up with, with the person before I meet them. Got it. And then what about um, when you say building rapport, like what are you trying to do on that first call? 
Um, I'm just trying to really figure out uh, what they're trying to accomplish. Because if I can figure out what they're trying to accomplish, then I'm going to provide a solution to the problem. And if I could do that, uh, they're going to want to work with me. Um, simple as that. Um, and just being attentive to their needs and not really worrying about how much I'm going to make until I figure out uh, their situation, ultimately. Because if I can't do that, then there is no deal. So, uh, you know, I really focus on helping them out as best as I can. Um, and, you know, leaving no stones unturned uh, and allowing, you know, and making them as um, comfortable as possible with moving forward with me. Got it. And then, um, first of all, thank you so much for sharing all this because I feel like it's really insightful. I'm learning on it. Uh, I'm learning. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're enjoying this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. Show Angel some love. Um, but, um, okay, so <clears throat> are you getting price on the first call? Like, how do you go about getting price? And then typically, are they wanting what a wholesale price needs to be? Or do you have to get them down in price? Um, well, my my lead manager does attempt to get the price. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't, he, I mean, he asks a couple times. If he doesn't, it's not a big deal. Maybe, you know, they, they just don't know. Yeah. Um, they haven't really did their research. Uh, but for the most part, when the lead gets to me, is because there's something there that makes it worth my time. I do try to get the price on the phone or at least arrange mm -hmm. um, for me to work with and see if this person is logical and realistic. Mm -hmm. um, if if they are, then I obviously go on that appointment ap appointment knowing that it's going to be a deal. Uh, if I can't get the price and this person is really just lost and doesn't know how much they want, then I'll still go on that appointment if it's worth my time. Mm -hmm. And I'll just um, break everything down in a very analytical uh, uh, way to that person as to why I'm offering what I'm offering. Got it. So just to be clear, let's just say you get price over the phone mm -hmm. and let's just say they want market value. Do you go on the appointment? No, I tell them on the phone that they Same. should list it. Got it. You know, but, but <laughs> if, if they got to me, yeah, it's because their situation is past listing because my lead manager would have already told them, Hey, list. Oh, okay. You know, so if they got to me and they're, they're still singing that tune, I'm going to tell them, like, hey, you know, why, why don't you list? And then they're going to tell me why they're not going to list. And then I tell them that, hey, you know, pretty much the way that life works, if, if you want me to make this work for you this way, yeah. I need a little bit of leeway on the price. Yeah. And, um, and if there's somebody who's fit to work with us, then they're going to be logical and they're going to understand. Because yeah. ultimately, we're not trying to steal somebody's property or get rich of somebody's property. We're really trying to help them, but obviously we need something in, in return. In return. Yeah. And then let's say they're close to a wholesale price. Let's say it's 20 to 50 K um, variance between where you need to be at and what do they want? Then will you um, still go on the appointment or yeah, how does that work? I'll go on the appointment uh, if it's that far away. Um, I don't think that's far. Yeah. You know, 50 K I'll, I'll go on the appointment, especially if the, uh, if the situation is, if the lead is a good, if, is a good lead. Yeah, for sure. Got it. Okay. And then, um, I guess like, I know people are going to listen to this and, and think like, how do you get people down on price? Cause I feel like that's the hardest thing where seller wants, let's say you need to be at 300 and the seller wants 350. Like right. how do you get them down on price? I mean, you have to be really good at what you do and, and, and fixing people's problems. Because if you get really good at what you do, then you, you know, you create leverage for yourself and for your business. Um, if somebody wants to co close quickly and you can make it happen, you have leverage. If somebody needs, you know, if an old lady needs a whole bunch of stuff moved uh, to her next place and, and she doesn't know how to do it and you can do it, you have leverage. You know, um, if, if you're able to help people and provide solutions to their problems, you know, you're going to be able to bring the price down because that's just, you know, the nature of somebody who's logical and understands, you know, you scratch, you, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yeah. What about like, I feel like we're going into like a lot of like deep detail. Um, what are like the main, okay, let's just transition to sales. Mm -hmm. So um, you got to be trying to solve a problem for them. Mm -hmm. Um 
what are like the main objections that you get typically like over the phone and then in person main objection uh the main i mean main objection is always i mean price you know some people always want more price uh the you know higher price and um like i said you just have to be able to understand what you're providing the value of what you're providing so that you can leverage it correctly um and if you don't see the value in what you're providing, you're never going to, you know, allow them to see that value. Mm-hmm. How are you going to, you know, it. explain yeah. the value if, if you don't know the value that you provide? Yeah. Um, so price is, is, is usually the main one, especially out here in Vegas yeah. with appreciation and everything coming over here. The Raiders, this, that, you know, everybody thinks their house is worth more just because, you know, something is coming to Vegas, mm-hmm. you know. But when they bring up price, what do you say exactly? Can we role play if I'm like, well, you know, the Raiders are coming and the A's are coming, you know, the MGM just redid their tile. I feel like my house is worth more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, When did you redo your tile? Oh, well, you know, I haven't, but, you know, I, I got a brand new refrigerator. I bought in like 2015. I keep it clean. Absolutely. And I completely understand that, Brian. But see, when we buy a property, our main intentions is to buy that property and 100% upgrade that property. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, what we're looking to do is something completely different, okay? Um, Now, it's okay if we're not a fit for each other, uh, which is the reason why why I asked you when we were first speaking if we were. It sounded like we were. So Mm -hmm. um, do you think we're still a fit at this point or, or, or would you rather like, you know, list with an agency if they could get you uh, the the best price possible? Well, I just want to see, you know, I want to try to get as, you know, as much as I can. So do you think we could get like 350 for it? Let's say you need to be at 320. We'll just say 350. I can't really do 350, Brian. Okay. I need way more wiggle room than that. Okay. Yeah. Um, For me to make this work, I need to be at about $300,000. Okay. Um, can I think about it? Can I call you back on next week and call you back? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What exactly do you need to think about? Is it the price or is it me? Mm. Um, I think the price. I'm hoping to get like a little bit more than 300000 300000 Well, um, I could be a little bit flexible with you if you're a little bit flexible with me. Where, where, where do you think we can maybe meet in the middle? Um, yeah, could we meet in the middle at like 325? Um, I don't know about that, um, Brian. I need to be a little bit lower than that. I can't really make a profit at 325. Um, I have some wiggle room, maybe 305, 307 if I push the envelope. Would that work? Okay, can we do like 320? Yeah, damn, that was good. That was actually good. Is that is that actually what you do? I mean, to be honest, is that probably sucked, but I'm way better when actually speaking with somebody on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I said, like if 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 I'm if I actually decide to get into numbers with somebody, um, they have to be logical. Like I'm not gonna get into numbers with somebody who's not logical. And even even um, with the education that I get, you know mentors you know they get mm-hmm. on me for not making uh you know a lot of offers but um a lot of the times it's like why would i make an offer to somebody who is who's not logical or even yeah i'm not go- i'm not going to be in their ball- ballpark just for them to say no yeah yeah what about um so what i picked up out of that is you never actually offered me the 320 you kept going lower than what i needed to get it at right is that on purpose yeah i mean I know my numbers, right? And if, if you know your numbers, you know that that person is not going to be able to get 320 from another wholesaler mm-hmm. or somebody else who's calling them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, don't panic and try to just lock up the deal at 320 when you know you're not going to make a profit. Mm. And sometimes, you know, if it's not a deal, it's not a deal. You know, just kind of walk away. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll play hard to get as much as the person on the phone. Mm, okay. But you, you play harder to get in person or over the phone? Over the phone. Because over the phone, at that point, I haven't met you yet. So we really haven't 
I really haven't came to the conclusion that, you know, you'd, you're worth my time in person. Yeah. Um, if I meet you in person, then, you know, I think you're a great person to get in front of. If I'm doing this with you over the phone, then most likely you're probably going to not be a fit for me. Mm, okay. So you really pre-qualify your appointments. You're not just out there gunslinging going yeah. on wild appointments. Yeah, and that could be a problem. I, you know, That's I, funny. I, I, rec- I recognize that, and I feel like I do have to get better at that, <clears throat> at uh, taking taking more at bats. But yeah. again, that's going to come with the with the repetition, and you know, as I get better at things, I guess. Yeah. So when I used to be a realtor, right? So I used to be like a listing agent. So mm-hmm. I'd cold call expired listings. You know, what expired listings are. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd cold call expired listings. And then I would pitch them on listing or whatever. And then I would go out to the appointment and then try to get the contract signed. Right. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) there's different ways realtors could get appointments. They could be like, oh, well, Angel, I saw your house was listed. I might have some buyers. Can I go look at it? Right. Mm -hmm. So that is an unqualified appointment because the seller thinks you're going out there just to look at the property, not to go on a listing appointment. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And then there's high qualified appointments where I used to be like, hey, Angel, I'm going out there to look at your property. Then we're going to sign a listing contract and then we're going to list it on Friday for this price. OK, right. So there was a spectrum. Right. So what, what I would do in the beginning, I'm going on every single appointment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, hey, I just want to meet you. I just want right. to see the house. And then I'd go there and try to pitch them. And then as I got more experienced, I would like. I would um, just qualify more because I was just like, I don't want to go out there. And then I would make sure they understood they were going to sign a listing agreement. And then I was making sure they had a price. Right. Because if I go out there and I need to list them at 350 and they want 400, I just wasted my time. Right. Or I'm going to get the listing at 400 and then it's not going to sell. So right. now I'm wasting a bunch of time. So I think. Um, but then also, too, what I got really good at is understanding when, like, if someone said 400, it's it's almost like intuition or just gut where you're like, I think I could get this person down. Right. So I'm going to go on this appointment. It's a risk, but I'm going to go on it. Right. Um, so that's kind of like where it sounds like where you're at, where you're like really good at pre-qualifying. And then maybe um, sometimes you're going to have to start going on some appointments that aren't yeah. maybe the most qualified, but yeah. And I'll be honest with you too, there, you know, part, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why I don't, I haven't hired an acquisitions manager is because I don't have enough food for them. Another reason is because the, the sales part of it is actually the hardest part for me to teach yeah. because it, it, it comes natural. Like it's just, yeah. I guess it's off the muscle, I guess, you know, yeah, as yeah, they yeah. say. Yeah. Um, so it's hard for me to put on paper that what intuition, yeah. that sixth sense. Yeah. You know, your um, lead manager can't do it. He's not good yet. At Enough. sales. Mm, he, yeah, I, I haven't really trained him on sales. I would probably start training him. Well, he's already in sales. Right. Yeah. So Just he like, is kind of training right. a little bit. Just like giving offers and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you some some coaching if that's okay with you. Yeah, right. So this is Absolutely. what I would do. Coaching for free. Yeah, here we go, baby. You. So there's there there's there's two ways you could do this, right? One, ascend. So that means that's what ascension means is like when you take an employee from like a VA to a lead manager to acquisitions to COO. So you mm-hmm. move up someone. So you could rather start trying to ascend your current lead manager. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're going to have to go out and hire. Right. So the, so I'll give you the benefits of both. So the benefits of ascending your current lead manager is you already know him. You already know, like, and trust him. Um, I'm assuming, right, because he works right. with you. Um, you, could, um, you could easily start sending him on appointments like these low percentage chance Mm -hmm. appointments you could start sending him the on those and it's not going to take away from his current production where if you bring someone cold in and you're sending them to cold you know appointments they're going to be like how am i going to make a living here right i'm saying this yeah yeah so you could you could do it slower with him because 
he already doesn't make money as acquisitions. This would just be helping him make more money. Mm. Um, it's going to be get his feet wet, get his feet wet. It's a slower grow. Um, and you could train him. It'll be easier to train him because you've been working with him already for a while. How long have you had him? Uh, two years now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've been, you already know how he is, how he works. So that's one good path. The other path is you hire someone to, uh, do acquisitions. Okay. So typically for acquisitions, specifically in real estate, you want them to no sales. Mm -hmm. So like they have to rather have been in sales um, or um, you could just tell they're a natural salesperson. Mm -hmm. And this, this could vary from a big company, but I'm saying this specifically to you because you're like a smaller group. Mm -hmm. So for you to come on and train someone in like brand new to sales and then also brand new to real estate, that's going to take months. Right. And that's also going to cost you money because there is a cost of opportunity when they're going on appointments and you're not, if they don't get it like that, that actually right. costs you money. So I would look for someone with a sales experience and potentially real estate experience, like maybe like a wholesaler that like couldn't really make it, but they're good at sales right? or um, someone who was in sales and they're good at sales, but they don't fully know real estate, but to just straight hire someone that, doesn't have sales experience and doesn't know real estate for you is just, it's probably wouldn't work. Yeah. You could do it, but it's tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I keep, uh, like getting that advice to like either, like either hire somebody with the, with the experience or mm -hmm. to move him up since he's already been there and he's already kind of understands my, my style and what, yep. I, what I need from him. And then yep. just, you know, c find another lead manager since it's a, you know, lower guess, yeah, level. Lower yeah. Position, yeah. 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 Which yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. For sure. So I think what the biggest mistake people do with hiring is like they underestimate the amount of time it takes to teach people. Yeah. Especially sales and acquisitions, because you almost have to like chip your teeth on learning. Yeah. There's no other way to learn. Yeah, for sure. No, you have to. You have to fail. Yeah, you have to fail. Yeah. And that, but the problem with that is every time they fail, that's costing you money. Correct. So it's not a, like, oh, you failed. It's yeah. all right. It's like, oh, well, you just lost anywhere from five to 30 to 80K right. potentially. Right. So that's where um, I'd probably just, if you can, start with your lead manager. And then like like send them on just like the BS appointments. See how he does in those. Yeah. And then what what I used to do when I first started is like I'd go on appointments, and um, if it's a good one, right? I'm 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 telling him, hey, like when when before you make the offer, tell them you got to step outside and speak to your manager. You know, let me know what they want. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Tell him you got to get permission from me and, you know, kind of play that right. back and forth game until he's fully equipped. Right. You know what I'm saying? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So that way you're kind of like, you know, and then sometimes he might even like get deals locked up too high. Right. And but at least he got a deal right. locked up. At least he's trying. Yeah. Exactly. Least, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when I first started, I used to get deals super high. <laughs> I think I, I, the first three I locked up were were not deals. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the way the progression works is first you get leads. Well, first you're calling and you don't understand what a lead is. Right. You're just trying to get a lead. Then you start getting appointments and then your quality of appointments ranges. You can go out there. They not answer the door. Right. You can go out there. They might be hot. Next, you get contracts. First, you're getting contracts, mm -hmm. overpriced, unsellable, and then slowly, you know, your closing per your close per contract goes up, right. and then that's just the the progression. There's no way right. around it. Right, it's a cycle. It's a cycle, yeah, yeah for sure. No, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and moving forward, I think that's. I mean, I'm going. To, I'm going to have to make the decision of which one to to do um and i think ultimately it's going to depend on my lead manager if he wants to take that leap to to actually be in in that position yeah uh, i've never really had that conversation with him um yeah so that's something and i don't think do. also too you don't have to commit to making him acquisitions right it's like see how you yeah you just you start do. training him without him knowing and then 
send them on an appointment. Be like, hey, like I want you to go on this appointment, you know, do these steps, you know, figure out how much they want and see if you can get them down and then call me, step out, call me. I'll give you the final offer. I'll tell you where you need to be at and then see what he does. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can do that without him knowing because he's a big fan of yours. So he's going to be. Is watching. he? Oh, no. Yeah, he's gonna all, be right, all right. Is he? Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Wow. This is your shot. Don't make me look <laughs> bad, dude. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think? Um, what else do you think you feel like is like your bottleneck right now in your business? Um, bottleneck. Uh, it's probably me trying to keep my expenses low low yeah to be honest um now you know i'm not a big fan of spending a whole bunch of money yeah to push revenue 100%. there has to be a balance right there has to be a balance i i do i'm not you know i i do want to spend more money on marketing uh but with that also comes learning something new and not wasting that money yeah um which is something that i want to make sure that i'm doing correctly i'm i'm, I'm scaling correctly not just throwing a whole bunch of money at the wall and and thinking that my revenue is just gonna bump up uh, just by doing so. Because you have so many leads, why don't you get a second lead manager? Um, that was I, my thing. Honestly, it doesn't feel like I I need. It's something that I've considered, and I've done like um, audits in the CRM, but like there's not o there's not overdues. Like he doesn't have overdue tasks and overdue. How many leads is he calling a day? He's probably making like a hundred dials uh, a day per day. Yeah. And he, he's having 12%, um, you know, connection rate. And he's having, you know, probably like he's have he has a lot of conversations on a daily basis. Have you thought about hiring somewhere, someone underneath him where he gets all the new leads, all the non contacts? I don't know if you guys have that where like people just don't answer the phone again, right. like all the non contacts, all those like having like a, junior so, setter yeah so that's something that would be beneficial in my opinion because there are a lot of leads that fall off for sure and then they're contacted less frequently for sure so you know yeah that's absolutely um a good way to bring somebody in and yeah you know kind of train them to be the next person up exactly you know? so, and and you that's less than starting a whole new marketing campaign right and yeah and, and yeah that that actually would be beneficial because we are looking into and I know we've talked about this plenty of time, the whole, you know, taking the, the SMS into a, another market yeah, virtually. Um, and, you know, getting in front of people is such a big part of my process that I've, I've always had a limiting belief behind, like, the over locking the up deals over the phone. But I do understand yeah. that, like, other markets are, you know, lower price point, and that makes it a little bit easier to lock up deals over the phone. I um, wonder if you would even need to go into another market or even if, like, that second person brought in like a quarter or 50 percent of what your current guy does because there has to be deals in the crm right you're getting that many leads like there has to be more have you ever like i don't know if there's a way to audit it i wonder if there's a way to go in there and look at how many people in your crm ended up selling but you guys just didn't i mean i guess uh, there would be a way um probably scrubbing the the list and just pulling the the recent solds by that. There's a way to, to do that. I, I would um, look and see. Yeah. And then, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah but, I, but I do agree with you, though. I, I do think there's a lot of opportunities uh, with people that um, have been uh, least prioritized. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, if somebody's in your system, they need to be touched. Yep. You know what I mean? They gotta be blown e up. Even though they, they fall off the priority. Yeah. Uh, system they need to be uh, called so I do see uh, for a lot sure of benefits in that for sure yeah because I think like a good amount of leads for a salesperson to get is about I forgot I asked Jared from Grant Cardone's team it mm -hmm. was low it was like eight a day yes it wasn't it wasn't high yeah, it's not high if they're, they're, they're if they're qualified. working them exactly yeah, working them yeah so if you have months of like mm -hmm older leads that potentially could get worked. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm working with my lead manager on right now is we, we did a, a, a CRM audit the other day and I've been teaching him on how to keep his pipeline clean yeah. of people who, you know, um, 
want to work with us or either you know we have a chance on working with them and not polluting the pipeline with a lot of tire kickers a lot of people who have no interest in selling yeah um you know because one of the things that i didn't touch on that that um people don't realize about sms marketing is that you have to be able to follow up with people and and check up on their situation you have to be able to smell motivation yeah um you can't assume you can't run your business in a way that you know, you, you think you're going to get a low-hanging fruit every time you, you call somebody, right? Oh, okay. You have to talk to, to somebody, understand their situation, and see the progression in yeah. time. Be able to understand how that situation is going to progress, Yeah. right? Um, and I think that's why uh, we, we get good results with SMS because we, yeah, we, we follow up with people and we nurture the leads that we have in our CRM. And we really understand the situations that are going that they're going through and it, what it might develop into. What do you think? Do you know what your the time from getting a lead to to getting it under contract or closing is? Yes. So by so by the time that the lead comes into the system to the time that we're closing it, on average, is about ninety to one hundred days. Dang. It's, it's it's not it's not it's not long, but it's not short. Either. No, it's not short at all. Right. Um, but yeah, um, it's less than cold calling. I think cold calling is like six to nine months. You know, yeah. for us, SMS is like three to four months. And the is problem like, is people don't follow up for that much time. You, They're you, like, oh, you don't want to sell. And then they go off into their own world and you, completely. And then they're like, SMS doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, you have to follow up. And also, you know, to the people out there who are, um, you know, soaking up all this knowledge on different podcasts and, you know, different people and their businesses, you have to understand the kind of leads that they're bringing in. Yeah. Right. Because if you're talking about PPL leads and PPC and, and mailers and, and, and commercials, those leads are going to convert quick, quicker. Yeah. So when you hear these people talking, they might be talking about these type of leads. Yeah. It's a different, it's completely different, different ball game. Right. When you, when you're talking about SMS, cold calling, um, these leads, you're going to have to nurture them. And if yeah. you don't have the if, if you don't have the skill set or the patience um, or the the knowledge to understand the situation, you're not going to get leads because you're not going to come across low hanging fruits like, you know, the, the other marketing channels. If you're if you're into low hanging fruits, then you're going to have to pay the big bucks to get those low hanging fruits, those low hanging fruits. Yeah. Um, OK. Very last thing I want to touch on is your wife. Right. You yeah. said your wife was with you in the car. Driving around, <laughs> driving for dollars. Um, I know she was like involved after that too, right? She was, she was, yeah, she was, yeah, she was with me in the business. Bro. How important was it for your wife to support you and what you've done? It was the most important thing, man. I mean, uh, there's so many people out there, you know, who are trying to take a leap and do something different in their lives and their significant other doesn't approve of what they're doing or um, eat. Maybe they don't say it, but they, you know, they don't support it. Yeah. <clears throat> My wife was supported, supportive every step of the way. Yeah. Um, from the moment that I, w I started watching wholesaling videos, she saw me watching videos um, every single hour of the day. And after like two weeks, I told her, I'm like, I think I could do this. She said, yeah, I think you can too. Like she said that quickly with conviction, with belief mm. and that made me, you know, even believe in myself if, if, if I didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was extremely important for me because she's my partner and um, she allowed me to see the vision. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to shout out to your, your queen. What's her name? Kiana. Again? Kiana. Shout out to you. Yep. All right. Um, for We're going to leave the description of your social media um below on this youtube but for people listening to this on just the audio on apple where do they go to find you so you can find me on instagram angel hernandez rei yeah um follow me shoot me a message um i'm always open uh to talking to people who are looking to get into real estate it excites me to talk to people who are looking to get into real estate so if you message me i promise you i won't leave you on red there we go all right thank you for coming on brother thank you all right guys this was the wealthy investor podcast if you haven't subscribe Thank you. Peace.